tuning in. Okay, guys, I'm going to hurry through this as fast as I can because I keep recording videos for you guys, and every time I go to upload them, um, it's just not doing it. And I wonder if it has something to do with the um, how long the video is. So I'm going to hurry quickly and try to get through everything that's happened in the last week, week and a half. So today, um, I'm going to go by my original due date. And that puts me at eight weeks and four days pregnant today. Um, so basically still having most of the same symptoms. Nothing's really changed in that aspect. I don't feel quite as nauseous as I did for week six and week seven. I feel like I still feel icky a lot of the time, but maybe I'm having a little bit easier time finding things excuse me, that sound um, good enough that I'm able to eat something and that really helps when um, I can eat some food um, unless I over overdo it, which I tend to do quite frequently and then my stomach ache will just come right back. So I have to really watch my portion sizes and um, hurry and try to eat when I feel the urge because if I wait too long, it's just over and I just can't and I just sit there miserable. So. I've kind of been struggling with that a little bit. I've had some really random cravings. Um, I craved prime rib so bad. I drove way out of my way to this restaurant across town to get a piece of prime rib um, last week, and that was just hilarious. I, I rarely go to that extent to get something that I'm craving, but I was thinking about prime rib like 10 times a day. Like, it was becoming an obsession. I mean, it was a true craving. I couldn't get over it. So... I think I've mostly gotten that one out of my system now. Um, yesterday I ate an entire bag of chili cheese Fritos with spicy bean dip. I mean, come on, that's so bad for you, but it tasted so good. And then I suffered afterwards because I sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, I have the worst heartburn. But like in my head, I still wanted to eat it. It was so bad. I was like so miserable, but I still wanted to eat more. So that's just crazy. I, it's just weird to have things like that happening inside your body. Um, I've had some really bad hot flashes um, where I am literally up in the middle of the night with my head in my freezer because I've already stripped my clothes off. I have no blanket. I have had some ice water and I just cannot cool off. I am just dying of heat. Um, it's more prominent at nighttime. It sometimes happens during the day too, but oh my gosh, I just seriously sat there with my head in the freezer just like, holy cow, oh my god, I'm dying. Like, it's just definitely those hormones are just surging and I can tell. So, um, my mood has been pretty good. I mean, pretty stable for the most part. Not really getting overly emotional, um, over angry, anything like that. I seem to have a better... Um, more stable mood than I have in previous pregnancies, and um, my sex drive has still, it's still fine. I don't feel like it's diminished, which tends to be one of the first things to go when I get pregnant. I'm just like, I don't want anything to do with that. I've talked about this previously, but this time around, it's just different, which is awesome. I don't know if it's my age. I don't know if it's just this particular pregnancy. You know, it's hard to pinpoint um, the differences and what's causing them, um, but this time around has just been so different. I haven't thrown up yet, not one single time, and I don't know if I've mentioned this in previous videos, but my, pretty much every single one of my pregnancies, I throw up every single morning, um, and, but then I'm pretty much okay the rest of the day. I haven't, don't have a lot of nausea, so this time has been opposite where I'm not throwing up at all, but I do feel kind of nauseous throughout the day, so... I mean, it's kind of sixes. I don't know which one I would choose over another one. Nobody likes to throw up, especially not stomach acid in the morning, but nobody likes to be sick all day either. So, you know, it's just different, and oh, that's fine. So um, I did go back and have a third ultrasound um, to check baby's growth, to check the hematoma um, in my uterus, and everything is going really, really well. This last appointment that I had on Monday, I measured eight weeks in one day, um, which if you know from the previous week, so the first one I had, I was six weeks, two days. Exactly a week later, I was only measuring six weeks, five days. 
So that had me really worried. I had only had three days of growth in a week. Um, but my third, which was exactly a week later, I measured eight weeks in one day. So I'm thinking that that second ultrasound, the tech just wasn't precise with those measurements. At this point, I mean, the tiniest little itty bitty bit that you're off with those markers can be the difference of days, even weeks. So I think it's really important that they're very precise because, you know, if you're like me, you just didn't worry. And that's what I did. Um, I, I stopped worrying so much about the hematoma um, because I was told that that looked like it was shrinking. Um, and yes, once again, at my third ultrasound, the tech said it seemed to be getting smaller, still seemed to be resolving, baby was doing really, really well, growth was on, heart rate was excellent. Excuse me. My first appointment, the heart rate was 108. Second, the heart rate was 133. And the third, it was at 163. So it's nice and strong. She gave me some pictures this time, which are so cute because you can actually see the head, the little arm buds, the little leg buds. I mean, you can actually make out the fact that it's a baby now. And on the ultrasound, you could actually see the baby kind of wiggling around this time, which was just amazing to see it moving. Uh, it was just really cool. The um, difference in growth from seven to eight weeks was huge. I mean, it almost looked like it had doubled how big it was and just really started forming and looking like a baby because I think week six and seven, it was just a blob. It didn't really have a distinct like head, body, whatever. Um, so it was a really good appointment. I left that appointment feeling really confident and I'm sure and every day that I feel like nauseous and gross, I just keep telling myself that is a good sign that everything's progressing and going well. So um, what else? My skin is still awful. I'm still breaking out a ton. Um, not that my skin was ever good, but it's just different. Like my breakouts are just different. Um, I've been having really vivid dreams still, been really, really thirsty still, um, just need tons and tons of water. I know a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that I am still nursing, and so my body really, really needs a lot of fluid right now. Um, I my, my nipples are still really, really sensitive when Vivian is nursing. It hurts really bad when she first latches on. It goes away. It's kind of like at the beginning when you're establishing breastfeeding. Um, it's just sore, and it hurts when she latches, and then it slowly diminishes throughout the feeding, but, you know, it's still not fun. Um, she's still not showing any signs of wanting to stop. We are still co-sleeping. Um, so I'm trying to decide at this point which one needs to go first. Do I need to wean her first or do I need to get her out of my bed first? Because right now, neither one of them seems like it's ever going to happen. I just feel like I'm going to be nursing and sleeping with her forever. So, um... I don't know what else quite to say about what's been going on. Um, I will give you guys a belly shot this week because I have yet to do that. Oh my god. <laughs> I just almost fell out of chairs. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you guys my belly. So keep in mind that I have five kids, guys. So, um, you know, I am already not, you know, slender by any means, but there is my eight and a half, almost nine week belly. I I feel like I've been bloated this whole time. Um, there's from the front. I I just do. I feel like. I've been bloated, and uh, it's a good thing I've told almost everybody that I am pregnant, so I don't feel like I have to, like, suck in my stomach, but still, my my sister's pregnant right now, too, and she's just a skinny little bean to begin with, but um, my daughter, my, my almost six-year-old daughter came up to me the other day, and she's like, Mom, your, your belly's bigger than Aunt Caitlin's, even though my sister's a couple weeks further along in her pregnancy than I am, and 
But yeah, thanks a lot, Evelyn. Like, <laughs> but you know, she she doesn't know any better. But it's just you know, the, hello, this is my sixth kid. My body is like this is like memory foam. You know what I'm saying? It's just going right out there. Um, I know a lot of that is bloat, and I know a lot of it is residual from like all my other kids. But I also can tell a difference in my waistline um, when I have my pants buttoned and I sit down like if I need to drive somewhere in the car or I'm just sitting down um, to eat or whatever it is, I have to unbutton my pants because it's just so tight. Um, I can definitely feel that it's, it's getting bigger. So I told Ian, um, I don't know that I'm going to invest in any sort of maternity clothes this time. I still have my belly band, so I might just use that and then... Um, I'm just going to go invest in, like, a bunch of yoga pants and pajama pants because, you know, I have my pants for work that are specific of what I have to wear. And then when I get home, I strip right out of my clothes, and I am in pajama pants anyway. So I thought oversized T-shirts and yoga pants. That is just my personality. I would rather be comfortable than stylish any day, any day. So, anyways, guys, I am rambling now, so I'm going to go, and I will talk to you guys for week nine. Bye.